If you want to grow a business, get more customers, make more sales, or make any kind of an impact in the world whatsoever, then it pays to know how to use a few simple psychological principles. And there is perhaps no principle more powerful, especially in sales and marketing, than that of reverse psychology. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to use reverse psychology in your sales and marketing, how to do it effectively, because it truly does have the power to increase your profits, your revenue, and help you connect with your customers on a deeper and more emotional level. And I'll help you avoid a few of the most common mistakes and pitfalls that most people make when it comes to using reverse psychology in their sales and marketing. And it all starts by first really quickly going over exactly what it is I'm talking about when it comes to using reverse psychology in your sales and marketing. And then understanding just what's going on inside someone's brain that makes reverse psychology just so darn effective. So let me start with a simple definition first. Reverse psychology is basically just offering or supporting an idea that's opposite to the one that you actually want the other person to take. For example, in business, the goal is usually to get some person, some customer, some prospect to take some kind of an action, typically a purchasing decision. So the usual approach here would be something like, hey, you should buy this because it's good. Whereas the reverse psychology approach would be closer to something like, hey, you probably shouldn't buy this. I don't think it's right for you. Now I appreciate, this sounds crazy on the surface. I mean, if you want someone to do something or buy something or take some kind of action, why would you ever advocate for or suggest that they do something completely different? And well, it all comes down to two important principles. The first of which is something known as reactance. And the second is the mimetic theory of desire. So let me go over both of those really quick and then we'll dive into exactly how to put all of this into play in your sales and marketing. React Reactance, according to the American Psychological Association, is a model stating that in response to a perceived threat to, or loss of, a behavioral freedom, a person will experience psychological reactance, or more simply, reactance, a motivational state characterized by distress, anxiety, resistance, and the desire to restore that freedom. Basically, we, as people, usually don't like to be told what to do. And when someone tells us what to do, not only does our guard go up and we become less open to their suggestions and their ideas, whether good or not, but we actually automatically start to reject them. Again, whether they're good ideas or good suggestions or not, we simply push them away simply because someone's telling us what to do and we don't like it. The other reason that reverse psychology seems to work just so well is due to a little known something known as the mimetic theory of desire. Mimetic desire is the theory that we as people, as humans, well, we want things simply because other people want them too. This is why things like social proof and showing examples of happy customers and testimonials and case studies and things like that, scarcity, showing how something is in limited or short supply compared to demand, and indifference, being fine with or without the other person, are such powerful tools, and that's why they're used all of the time in sales and marketing. FOMO, or the fear of missing out, it's real. And being told that you can't have something often only makes you want it more. And understanding this and baking it into your sales and your marketing also helps you avoid one of the single biggest sales killers of all time, which is neediness. There is nothing that will destroy your authority, your credibility, your trust, and of course your sales faster than showing any signs of neediness or desperation. Nothing turns people off faster, both in business and in life, than showing that you're desperate or needy and just need to make that sale. In fact, one of the best and also hardest pieces of advice that I ever received early on in my career was to always act as if I didn't need that sale, as if I didn't need the other person in order to be okay, make my business business work. Sure, I wanted the sale, but more importantly, I wanted to help the other person achieve the goal or desired outcome that they were hoping to get. But one thing had to remain clear. Whether they bought or not, I was going to be just fine. And I had to put on the attitude and essentially adopt the confidence that what I was selling was in high demand and there were other buyers out there. So whether they did make that purchase and I did make that sale or whether they didn't, I was going to be fine either way. And portraying this level of confidence was kind of like a magic switch that flipped both in my mind and in the mind of my prospect, and it made sales become almost effortless. I mean, seriously, it was crazy just how effective this one simple strategy was, simply acting like I didn't need the sale. Not only was I able to sell and to serve more authentically and more ethically, but it also put my prospect at ease, and it made it seem like a more natural and sort of authentic form of conversation 
rather than a sales pitch. And so the first and maybe the most ethical form of all kinds of reverse psychology that you can use in your sales and marketing is maybe less reverse psychology and more neutral psychology. Whatever the case, it's effective and simply involves approaching your sales and marketing from a position of authority. Knowing that what you have to offer, what you have to sell is good. And so the goal becomes rather than making the sale, simply to determine if what you're selling and the person that you're selling it to, well, if there's a right fit, which leads me perfectly to my next point, the power of qualifying. If approaching my sales and marketing from a position of power and authority and never showing any signs of neediness or desperation was one solid piece of advice that really seemed to turn my career around, then implementing a qualifying strategy would be a pretty close second. Essentially what you're doing here is you're treating your customers, your clients, your patients, your prospects as applicants. Now, you can do this literally through the use of an application form, which I strongly believe is an absolutely mandatory piece for any B2B or service-based business, or you can do it a little more softly through your marketing by simply calling out who your business is for and who your business is not for. For example, one of the things that I do when I'm talking about my marketing master plan program is make it very clear that what I'm offering here is not a get rich quick solution, but rather it's gonna take some work, shocking. I know. And if you understand that if you're going to be putting in the work anyway, you might as well be working smarter and not just harder, then we're going to get along just fine. In fact, by talking about your business in this way and by admitting some kind of element that may repel certain people and attract others is another reverse psychological element known as a damaging admission. So let me cover that now. When it comes to reverse psychology, there is perhaps no more tried and true method than that of the damaging admission. It's where you not only acknowledge, but maybe even claim and stake outright all of the negative aspects and obstacles and potential risks that are involved with your offer, whatever it is that you're selling. Now, here's the thing. When most people think about the negative aspects of their business, well, they typically try to hide or ignore or at least downsize or minimize them playing them off as irrelevant or unimportant or not that big of a deal. But by admitting and claiming a few negative aspects of your business or offer, well, you actually build a ton more trust with your potential buyer. This is because it shows your integrity and it shows them that you're not trying to hide anything. Rather, you're being upfront and forthcoming with all of the negative aspects of what you're offering. This makes them far more willing to accept all of the rest of the things that you're saying as true. As an added bonus, it also allows you to get out ahead of any potential objections objections by covering them in advance. It's a, a true win-win situation in my books. Now, if you found all of those tips interesting, then you're going to absolutely love the video I put together right here on 15 psychological marketing triggers to make people buy from you. So make sure to check it out now and I'll see you in the next video. Or don't check it out. Nah, you should, you should probably check it out. This is why if the first price that you can present to someone is incredibly high or incredibly expensive, well, everything that comes